this video, we're going to be talking about slices. Let's go. So you want to learn about slices? Well, you came to the right place. The first thing I'm going to need you to realize is that we're going to be looking at a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional plane. And we're going to be using the information in terms of its cross-section and its base to figure out the volume of this three-dimensional object. Now, because it's three-dimensional, it's hard to visualize things like this. And so I went ahead and I'm going to show you the way that I visualize how do you look at one cross-section and think about this one piece throughout a object, right? How do you do that? Well, so what I have down below me is basically my idea of how I visualize this when I look at a three-dimensional object on a flat piece of paper. So, I have here y equals the square root of x. You also have the uh, x-axis, and you also have x equals four. And you can see the boundary right there, and I have it shaded in light red. That right there is the area of the base of this three-dimensional object. If I was to put my hand on a window, you would see the base of my hand, but it wouldn't look three-dimensional, it'd look flat. Just like that, this three-dimensional object is placed on a plane, on a two-dimensional plane, and you just see the imprint of its base. Well, due to the information Mr. Simpson has given us, I know that the cross-section is perpendicular to the x-axis, so that tells me my base is parallel with my y-axis. So I use this information to figure out everything I need to know to calculate one slice and then sum it all up using the integral. And then after that, we've got the volume. So let's get to it. So what helps me is I don't think about volume right away. I first look at the object. I try to mentally twist it around in my brain. For example, this might be what's on my Cartesian plane, on my grid. That's my, that's might be what I'm seeing. But when I utilize my knowledge of the cross section, I can then visualize kind of what the object looks like, right? And so look at that, look at that video down there and think about this, or rather any three-dimensional object of which you only see the base, just the flat base where it's sitting on. And then think about the cross section and then kind of visualize that cross section moving as it changes within the boundary. And then you get an idea of what three dimensions by using this idea of movement, you get that, you get the idea of the slice and you think, okay, well, it goes down here and it gets bigger and it's kind of like a square or a semicircle, whatever the case may be. You visualize it, you get an idea. After that, we've visualized it. We've got our, our boundaries, we kind of see what shape, you get an idea, make it real to us. Instead of just being numbers and symbols, let it be real. And so now our cross section is parallel with the Y axis. Therefore, what I'm gonna do is where my formula for the area of our uh, cross section, which is a square on the left side, and on my uh, other side that I'm doing the semicircle, I have the formula for a semicircle. And where S is, I'm gonna replace it with Y because that's the axis that's parallel with my uh, cross section. Now, I have Y squared on the left side for my cross section that's a square. On the right side, I have one over two or one half pi times y over two squared. I've just replaced the s with y. Had my cross section been like this, been a parallel with the x-axis, I would have put in a, an x there. It would have been x squared if it was a square instead of a y. You get the point. Now, moving on, we're now gonna replace the y, right? So we've first replaced the s with y because that was our uh, was where we were parallel, right? That was the parallel axis with our cross section. Now, we're gonna replace that y with our function. What is y equal? y equals the square root of x. And had it been in terms of x and say it was x equals the square root of y, well, we would have just replaced our x's with the square root of y. Simple as that, it's just a bunch of replacing right now. Okay, we've replaced it on both sides. I've replaced y equals the square root of x or I've replaced my y's with their square root of x, sorry. And so my volume for the, the 3D object, three-dimensional object or whatever it is, I'm, to get that, I'm gonna have to integrate. You see that video down there of all these slices, right? 
and you're just imagining them moving, you can see how they, they change. Well, if you were to add up all of them, what do you get? Well, to add up all everything under the curve, that's integra that's uh, yeah integration. So what we're going to do is take the integral from zero. Sorry, my camera's reversed. Zero to four, and we're going to add it all up for both of them, for both the semicircular cross section, since it's a semicircle, <laughs> and also the square. So both of them have the same uh, interval from zero to four. And all we're doing, that same formula up there, we're going to replace the y's with our function, y equals the square root of x. So y is now going to be replaced with square root of x. Here we go. We've got that written down right there. Now we're going to do a little bit of simplification. Square root and, and the exponent basically uh, are inverse operations on this side and as well as the other. I went ahead and did some simplification. This part's the easy part. We just go down here and do all that. And we get down to where we have, on the left side, we have this object where its cross sections were square. The, the volume, right? This is the volume now, because we've added them all up. All those little slices we were talking about, we've added them all up. And now for my, for my square, the one that has a cross section of a square, I've got eight units cubed for my semicircle. I added them all up, and these were cross sections that were semicircular. I'm not good at doing this. Here we go, semicircular instead of a square, and these semicircles got bigger and taller or whatever, and shorter, depending on the function. And I added them all up, and all these slices added up to pi units squared, which is roughly 3.14159 and so on and so forth, units squared, or cubed. It's cubed because we're talking about volume here. So. That's about it. The hardest thing for me is visualizing it, twisting it and turning it in my brain. You know, thinking about instead of this, using that slice, like I said, using that slice on this base to visualize the object that it creates without even really drawing all of it. Because to do all this all the time, that's gonna take a long time. Better just to kind of be able to do it mentally in your brain, get an idea and be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So there you have it. That's the best I got. <laughs> And there, hope it helps.